What's going on guys? This is Nolan and I am the Tier Zero Scrub. So today for you guys, I'm bringing you guys my Alter Guys deck profile. Uh, sorry I've been away for a while. I just got finished moving into my new place. And this was the first deck profile I wanted to bring to you guys like I said I would. Uh, I've been playtesting this deck a lot. Finally got all the cards in. I am proxy on one card, but we'll get to that here in a little bit. But I need y'all to do me a favor. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go. All right, guys. So this is going to be my new competitive deck going forward. Like I said, I've been playtesting this deck a lot. And it fits my playstyle to the best of its potential. Or sorry, to the best of its capability. And it has so much potential. I'm super excited to take this to the Indianapolis Regional on November the 4th. So if you guys are there and you recognize me, please come up say, hey, you got a card for me to sign. I'll be more than happy to do that. But anyways, let's go. So starting off with the Monsters. You can't play this deck without triple Altergeist Mellow Seek. Plus also got to have the one misprint. Anyways, uh, Mellow Seek, able to attack directly. And once this card deals battle damage, target one card on your opponent's field and pop it. And then you can change this out for a Link Karibo, Clara, and Rushka, depending if you have a rivalry in your hand or want to make sure Secret Village goes off without uh, no issues. Uh, Mellow Seek is just that Swiss Army knife for the deck, and it's just very, very good, especially in com especially in combination with this. Triple Altergeist Marionetter. Uh, so everybody knows its burst effect. When Marionetter is normal summoned, you can set an Altergeist trap card from your deck to the field. Uh, what, what many other people I don't think really know, Marionetta can target a Mellow Seek or any other Altergeist in the graveyard and tag out. It's really good in combination when you have Hexia and Protocol on board, so that way you always have a negate and a search all afterwards. So Marionetta really good, and the highest attacking um, Altergeist in the main deck. Uh, next, the best card in the main deck, Triple Altergeist Multifaker. Activate a Trap Guard, Special Summon this from your hand, and another Alter Geist from the deck. Uh, this kind of has the Cyber Dragon Dry effect, because when that effect is activated, you can only Special Summon Alter Geist to the rest of the turn. Which is, usually not, which is usually not an issue if you're doing this for Disruption on your opponent's turn. To get a Siliquitas or... Yeah, to get a Siliquitas on board, and either Bounce, Multi Baker, or Conquery to your hand. Whatever you need. And it's re just really good. And speaking of Siliquitas... Play two. Uh, target an Altergeist card and an opponent, and target one card your opponent controls and bounce it back to the hand. Really good disruption. And then Altergeist can query its Battle Fader and Effect Veiler into one card. Uh, it's just, again, another Swiss Army Knife uh, type of monster. Really, I really like it. Uh, notice not a lot of people play it, and the one person that placed fourth, I believe, in Columbus was side decking it. Which I mean, it's fine, but I feel like I feel like it's really good in the main board, just for those situations where you don't have where you don't have the necessary hands to combo off. Well, not really combo off, but be able to react to your opponent. Sorry, guys, I'm really used to playing combo decks at this point now. Anyways, that's it for the Ultra Guys monsters. Uh, next, I only play one hand trap, and this one hand trap's at three. I feel like it was really I feel like it was better. Triple Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Uh, negate my opponent's searches, special summon from the deck, and send a card to the grave. Really, really, you have a lot of uh, effect negation anyways, so this just stop anything to stop the searches, like, yeah, anything to stop searches. You have a lot of ways to disrupt your opponent, and this is just another one. Unfortunately, this deck can't play uh, Droll and Lockbird because we just don't have lethal damage on board enough, or well, enough times throughout the game to really use Droll. Which, that's okay. My side deck more than makes up for it, but we'll get in that in a second. So, Triple Ash, and that's it for Monsters. I only play four spells, and in testing, I feel like this was better. Uh, so, we're going to get right into it. We have one Pot of Desires and one Pot of Duality. Uh, so, I'm not playing Shared Ride. I like Shared Ride, but it's very situational, and I feel like it's better in a going second deck. Don't get me wrong, Shared Ride is a fantastic card. And I am not discrediting it, but I felt like one pot of desires and one pot of duality was just better. I mean, it's relying on my opponent to search a lot, and other than in the Sky Striker matchup, you really don't see a whole lot of searches going on. 
So I felt like Desires and Duality was just better to automatically get that plus one. And then for the other two, for the other two spells, we're playing two Secret Village. Uh, again, your whole deck spellcasters, so I didn't see any reason not to play Secret Village. I mean, being able to shut off your opponent's uh, spell cards is really good. And again, your whole deck is spellcasters, so having a spellcaster on board for this is not an issue. And to me, I view it as the second and third copies of Imperial Order. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, come at me in the comments if you disagree. That's it for spells. And now for the trap lineup. I play, we're going to play two protocol. Really good, very searchable when I'm comboing off. Or well, not really comboing off, but I usually like to end on a board of Hextia, Marionetter, and then have a protocol set for the Marionetter, and then tag out into Meloseek. So this way, no matter which one, no matter which uh, one my opponent activates that can disrupt me a lot, I can either have a spell and trap negate through Hexia to pop the Mellow Seek, and the Mellow Seek get me another Marionetter for next turn. Or I can use Protocol to pop the Mellow Seek to negate a spell or trap, like Reincarnation, Light Stage, whatever. And then, yeah, just having just having that setup is really helpful. And I, again, it just brings the deck to its, uh, to its full potential. Uh, the last Alter Guy's name trap card is one manifestation. So I was testing this at two. I feel like one. I feel like it's better at one. It's very recurrable, especially when I can have Silicoitus on board with a Hextia. So like I can pop my Marionette, and if I have to pop the Mellow Seek, activate manifestation, get back Marionette to bring it back to thirty one, and then combo off a of multi faker and so, and so on. Uh, then we have triple personal spoofing. Uh, being able to trade out into the altar guys that you need is really good. There's not a lot to say about that. All right, and now to the one card that I am proxying, and it annoys the crap out of me. And hopefully the seller from TCG player gets back to me as soon as possible. But triple infinite impermanence. So this deck definitely brings it to its full potential. Being able to... I'm always trying to set this. I really don't care to activate this out of my hand too much. Because there's just not a lot of times where I'm not controlling a monster. And then infinite being able to negate an effect and then combo into multi-faker and just keep going. Good. Infinite Impermanence is such a powerful card. Like, there's not much more to discuss about it. And then the one floodgate that you play is Rivalry. So, Rivalry is really good. Again, your entire deck is spellcaster. If your opponent's playing like multiple arc or playing multiple types of monsters, then rivalry just kind of just kind of shuts everything down. Really good card. I love this. And then this deck loses heavily to goes and match. Like if you hadn't noticed, the attributes are all over the place, and I lose heavily to goes and match. To out it, we have two heavy storm dusters, or triple heavy storm duster. I'm sorry. It's basically Twin Twisters for the deck in trap form. And again, really good if you have Multifaker in hand. And so I got this idea. I got this next idea from Bodum. You know, the Ultra Guys player from Wor that plays second in Worlds and topped in Utech. I think that's how you pronounce it. If I mispronounced that, I apologize. Uh, anyways, so we're playing Triple Solemn Strike. A solemn judgment and a solemn warning. The solemn package is absolutely nuts in this deck. Again, I already have a ton of ways to say no to my opponent, and the solemn package just oh my god takes that to the next level. In test, in testing, this was phenomenal. I won like ninety percent of my matches by with the solemn brigade. Just oh my god, it's so good in this deck. Like, I cannot talk about it enough, but I'm going to have to stop because now I have the auto win button. One Imperial Order. And that rounds out this deck at 40. Pay 700 life points to negate my opponent's spells. Okay. I don't even need to, I don't even need to activate uh, Village and, and Desires and Duality to win. Plus, I don't really see those cards all that often anyways. So, yeah, Imperial Order is fine. I, lo I love this card. It shuts my opponent out, basically. And that's it for the main deck. That's at 40 cards. 
So we're gonna go straight into the side deck. This side deck is just phenomenal, and I got a lot of and just a lot of ideas for this deck. For this side deck, it is just awesome. So we're gonna play two copies of Ghost Reaper and Winter and Winter Cherries. So this is strictly for Goki. Like I, I already play a lot of engaged to stop Sky Striker. It's just Goki. So Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. I play Firewall and is old in my extra deck. So in case I miss one with Reaper, with uh, Reaper, I can hit the other one. Uh, it's, it kind of sucks to hit Firewall with this, just for this for the simple fact that already in the middle of their combo. But hitting it, hitting Firewall slows it down enough to where they can't end on the uh, Gumbar board. So I really like Ghost Reaper, and I think it's very good. So like we just talked about, though, you can't play Droll in this deck. But what you can do is play Thunder King Ryo. I'm sorry, I bumped the camera. So Ryo, it's ba it's basically just a walking Droll and Lockbird. Like my opponent can't search anything or can't add cards to their hand by except by drawing them. So I feel like this is really good in game two against Sky Stri game two and game three against Striker. It can it just uh, it's just a nightmare for Trickstar to get over. It, yeah, it's just a it's a nightmare to get over with Trickstar, and just really really good. Uh, next we play three Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. This is for the mirror match. Is I'm not gonna let my fellow Altergeist player go off because uh, no. And then for game two and game three, two wiretap. Again, because I know game two and game three they're gonna be citing reboot evenly. Whatever, just to stop me from going off. So I figured having a way to negate that and keep going with my own plays, I felt like Wiretap was just really good for that. And again, it's just another card you can flip up and just keep going with Multifaker and whatnot. Uh, next, <laughs> I'm going to make people pay for playing Twin Twisters, MST, and whatever. Triple Waking the Dragons. Yes, I play Ultimate Falcon in the extra deck. So, if you want to play Twin Twisters against me, you're going to regret it. Because I have a Boreload and, and an Ultimate Falcon waiting on you if you do. And then for the last card, and then for the last uh, three cards in this in this side deck, triple evenly matched. As you guys can tell, I may have been away for a while, but my stutter is still here. Ha ha ha. Anyways, evenly matched. If I don't draw the most optimal hand, evenly matched just says reboot. Or just says restart. Restart the turn and then go. Um, but yeah, and there's really not much to say against about evenly match. It's just a blowout card. That's it for the side deck. Now off into the extra deck. You play one link Karibo because again, it's a mellow. It's a card you use the one mellow seek for to get your search. Uh, Clara and Rushka, kind of for the same reasons. And then Akashic. So Clara and Rushka and Akashic, I use to play if I'm playing uh, under rivalry and, and if I need a spellcaster on board for Secret Village. They're re Akashic is really good. It's basically like another pot of duality for the deck, essentially. Uh, and then in Clara and again, Clara and Rushka is just something I can use with Mellow Seek again if I'm playing under rivalry or I need a spellcaster on board for Secret Village to continue. Then I play three copies of of Altergeist Hextia. Again, Hextia really good. Hex Hextia is just a boss. I always have I always have to make sure I need to have a uh, Marionetter underneath it. Uh, I want to use it to its full potential. And again, being able to tag out from Marionetter back to the or to a Mellow Seek in my graveyard and having and have a constant negate on board and with a set protocol really good. Uh, Hextia is just a must of three eight. It's your lethal damage card for this deck. And again, you can just keep pumping this thing up. Uh, and then I play one Altergeist Prime Banshee. Uh, this doesn't come up as often. I think in testing I only made this once. But in theory, it's good. Uh, being able just to push being able to push for game and special summon Altergeist from deck and from deck and graveyard. Really good. Uh next the two cherries targets. 
Uh, like I said, is R is sold in Firewall. I need I need to have an out against Goki. And I figured cherries with these two is fine. Uh, next we play the Nightmare Package. One, one Cerberus. One Phoenix. And one Unicorn. I've only made Phoenix once and the other two not so much. But also though, you really don't... There's not a lot of times where you have monsters on board to make these. But in theory, if you need them, they're there. Uh, Borload, again, I've talked about Borload about a thousand times. It's the best defensive card in the game. And if I need to, for whatever reason, it's a really good Waking the Dragon target. But the main one is Raid Raptor Ultimate Falcon. Again, the 3,500 body that most decks in today's metagame can just not get over. Good. And then that's it for this, that's it for this deck profile, guys. So, let me all know, let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Uh, again, I'm... I've been playtesting this deck a lot, and I've have I've been having a lot of fun. It's really good, and again, it just fits my playstyle. I'm more, my playstyle is more. I'm gonna grind this game out, and then just keep continuing all of my own plays. I don't have to blow you out, but I'm gonna make you pay. And again, this deck is just so much fun. I absolutely love playing this deck, and I'm I'm gonna be playing this for the foreseeable future. So again, let me know, guys, what you think down in the comments section. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And please go check out my locals, P2 Collectibles, on eBay. I promise you, if you need any card, they will have it. And they are far above the competition. Oh, and by the way, a little fun fact. Uh, the card owners, or the shop owner, his last name's Far. So, <laughs> Anyways, guys, again, let me know what you think in the comments sections. And to all my fellow scrubs, stay classy. Later, guys.